Imagine achieving every goal that you aspire to and transforming every relationship in your life, both personally and professionally, by just understanding one concept, self-awareness. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how self-awareness can elevate your life and why it's the key to becoming the man that you ultimately aspire to be. Let's get into it. What's goody fam? We're talking about one of my favorite topics, self-awareness. Self-awareness has dramatically transformed my life, my business. It, it has grown and matured me personally and professionally. And it's something that I am in love with because it teaches me and it helps me understand life and people in ways that I never did before. Simply put, self-awareness is just having an understanding, a clear understanding of who you are, how you feel, how you show up in a space, and being clear about how that is viewed by others, right? So it's one, being clear with yourself, but it's also having an understanding of how you show up and how other people perceive you. Now, Self-awareness is really like twofold. There's internal self-awareness and there's external self-awareness. Internal self-awareness, internal self-awareness is more of the things that you know that other people can't see. These are your thoughts, your feelings, your values, your your, your character, your morals. Those are things that you are very clear about, you are in tune with, but other people may not be able to see those things very clearly. Then there's external awareness, you know, external self-awareness, which is essentially your, your behavioral tendencies, your patterns, your idiosyncrasies, the things that other people notice, but you may be blind to. And the idea is to make sure that both of those things, your internal and external self-awarenesses are congruent. They are the same. They're cohesive. They are aligned. And that takes work because we are, we are flawed human beings and we don't always see ourselves clearly based on our upbringing, the people that are around us, the environments that we're in. We may not be able to get a clear picture and get honest feedback. One of the things that one of the things that I noticed working with high performing executives, entrepreneurs, one of the things that they struggle with more than anything is having a consistent honest feedback loop. A consistent honest feedback loop. Having people who are not afraid to be honest with them. Most people who are successful or most people who are the outliers in their environment get a lot of yes people around them. And there's research that supports that. It's really challenging for people to tell the truth to their boss or prominent figures because of a myriad of reasons I won't get into because that's not what this video is about. But the reality is, even if you give people permission to tell you the truth, most people struggle with telling you the truth, even if you create space for it. And it's really because they are afraid of sabotaging or damaging the relationship. In the case of being someone who's really successful, whom other people depend on, people need you so much that they they are afraid of telling you the truth. They need you so much. But it ends up being something that is to your detriment. Because if you don't have people who can be a mirror and show you who you are, it's going to be really difficult for you to have a clear lens of how you show up and how people receive you. And that could be a really sobering idea when you do get around somebody who's raw and who don't care and don't mind hurting your feelings or just telling you the real. But when it comes to self-awareness, it is something... It's, I think of it like the gift that keeps on giving, right? It's something that allows you to, one, create a very intimate 
trusting, open, powerful, real relationship with yourself. When you're able to be completely honest about what I call your beautiful ugly, you know, the good, the bad, you're just able to be raw. You're able to unapologetically be yourself, accept yourself and live in your truth. And that doesn't mean that you're not striving to be better, but you have to be able to accept yourself. Understanding precedes acceptance. What I mean by that is you can't accept something that you don't understand. In order for you to truly accept yourself, in order for you to truly embrace who you are, for you to truly love yourself, you have to embark on a journey of self-exploration and self-discovery, which is going to lead you to self-awareness. And that's part of the reason why I'm a big fan of exposure, because I believe that awareness breeds choice. You can't choose things that you're not aware of. And the reality is the current state of your life is a reflection of the choices that you choose. But the choices that you are choosing isn't reflective of all of the choices that exist in the world, right? And I think that's the, the, the dope part about being a human and being on the planet with 8 billion other people is because you can learn from other people. You can be exposed to new things. And every time you're exposed to something new, it gives you more choices to choose from. And so I believe that your dream life is out there. You just have to be exposed to the choices that allow you to choose it and be in it. And I think that's, you know, for me, part of the exciting part of life is being on that journey, that that self-discovery, that quest of, you know, going to create and find yourself and create this life that's in alignment with, with your spirit. But yeah, once you once you develop that relationship with yourself, self-awareness allows you to develop really deep, meaningful relationships with other people, powerful connections. And I think that that's just a, a byproduct of the fact that, you know, when you're able to truly embrace and accept who you are, it, it creates space for you to do that with other people. When you understand, you know, your, your, your gifts, your challenges, your stuff, it creates a level of understanding. It creates a level of compassion for other people. And that's where the beauty of life really gets to blossom and bloom. I mean, for me on my journey, you know, I really needed to understand. I kind of always, I've always been introspective, so that's just me. But I, but I would say, you know, I hit, I very, my very first quest started, you know, maybe might have been, you know, 27. And I really like, I, these shoes that you left, you know, I always feel like, you know, my dad left shoes for me to fill and I respect those shoes and uh, I admire the man who wore those shoes, but those shoes don't fit me, right? My version of manhood is just different. And at 27, I think I gave myself permission to go wear my shoes fully, you know, unapologetically in a very raw way. And I really stopped trying to, I, I, at 27, I stopped abandoning myself for the sake of respecting my parents and their sacrifice and things like that. I think I elevated and grew as a man in that phase. But I would say my deepest, most, you know, enlightening and excruciating experience with self-awareness came around the time of my divorce and I remember really trying to figure out myself and trying to like make it my business to understand how I could be better and how I could be my best. And also wanting to understand what's wrong. Like, you know, what am I getting wrong? How am I managing or dealing with people wrong? Like really wanting to see both sides of the equation so that I could ultimately be best, be the best me. So, you know, going on that, I realized like, yo, 
One of the truths that I uncovered during that journey of, you know, self-exploration, self-discovery was that everybody is behaving the way that they behave because they have a desire to feel safe. Now, we do different things. We have different defense mechanisms, but we do these different things for the same reason, and that's to feel safe. And once I really understood that everybody is really, truly doing their best and everybody wants to be safe, it allowed me to have a level of compassion for people because I understand what it is to need to feel safe. And, you know, the things that I'm willing to do, you know, to make myself feel secure and safe. And that really dramatically changed my life. It, it like, rewired me in a way. And so my relationships with people really went to another level because my capacity expanded dramatically. I don't look at what a person does or says like it's something against me. I more so look at it like, oh, you feel uneasy or you feel unsafe and like what's making you feel that way? How can we get you back to a place where you feel secure? Um, it didn't take away from my manhood in any way. It didn't make me less of a man. It didn't make it didn't do anything to me in that regard. So, you know, the first thing I would say is going on a journey of self awareness will really reinvigorate, rejuvenate, refresh, and restore your relationships with yourself and with other people. But only if you allow it to, and only if you do the work. You know, the next the next thing I would say around self-awareness is it self-awareness is one of the seeds of emotional intelligence. And so going on this journey also allowed me to become much more. It gave me access to much more emotional range when we look at and maybe I'll do like a separate video on this, but emotional intelligence is comprised up of four components. It is self-awareness, it is self-management, it is social awareness and relationship management. So it, it starts with self, right? Being able to understand self and be aware of self and then being able to manage self, have self control. The next piece then goes to the external world where you're aware of others. And then it's how do you manage your relationships? How do you manage differences, as I say? How do we use our differences to make a difference? You know, the the thing about self-awareness is it doesn't work unless you are willing to take complete ownership of how you feel in any given moment. If you're not emotionally literate and you're not working to build emotional literacy and you're not looking to be real about how you feel, then you'll always suffer from, you know, some form of repression and that adds baggage and weight to you. You start to feel, well, at least I started to feel like I was isolated and in a box and, you know, Isolation over an extended period of time isn't good for anybody, especially when you're going through a storm. So, you know, one of the, the other benefits, I'll say that the, the next benefit is it gives you the, the skill to navigate your emotions effectively. It allows you to become emotionally intelligent, emotionally literate. You know, it, it gives you the tools to, you know, regulate yourself emotionally. Um, as a man, that is, honestly, that's one of the most, you know, refreshing, most comforting feelings that you can have because so much of a man's life is spent not being able to access it. I would tell people that I would window, window shop emotion, right? It's like you walk past the store, you see it in the window and you're like, oh, that's, Oh, that's joy. That's cool. Or oh, that's sadness. That's cool. But I would never go in the store and like, you know, touch it or have access or buy it or take it home. I would just look at it and then go about my day because things needed to get done. And men don't have time to waste on emotion. But I realized that 
if I didn't take the time to actually deal with these things, I would always be on a proverbial leash. I would always be shackled. I would always be weighed down. And, you know, the beautiful thing was I realized that the more that I confronted myself, the more free, the more light I became. And, you know, once you get a, once you get a taste of freedom, once you get a taste of peace, you are almost willing to pay any price to keep and maintain that. And I'm still doing it to this day. <laughs> and then, you know, I would say the last piece, being on a, a journey of self-mastery and always seeking to understand and be aware of self and be in tune with self, it is the vehicle to personal growth, right? Self-awareness, again, awareness breeds choice. You can't make a choice that you're not aware of. You can't heal something that you're not aware of. You can't fix something that you're not aware of. So if you want to grow, if you want to improve, it starts with being able to identify, being able to be aware, being able to assess. And all of those things give you access to growth, gives you access to to mastery of self, to self-control, to discipline. And as men, that is truthfully one of the duties. That's one of the staples, the requirements of being a man is being self-sufficient, being sound, being disciplined, being ruler of oneself, master of oneself. And again, that's a life's work, but it's something that we shouldn't give our we shouldn't give ourselves the wiggle room to slack on cuz there's too much at stake right i have a family wife children mama sisters nieces nephews like there's too much at stake i got community there's too much i have me and just being with me is a work and so i treat it as such i take it serious and i think that Every one of us owes it to ourselves to do the work, to become the best version of ourselves, to become self-aware. We owe it to our loved ones. We owe it to the people that are, you know, coming behind us that we're responsible for to do the work, to be our best selves, to be our highest possibility. You know, I think one of the things that, you know, I'll say this, there's research that says that about, you know, 90% of people who say they're self-aware actually aren't, right? So there's 90% of the people in the world who think they're self-aware, but the reality is only about 5 to 15% of people actually are. Go figure, right? And so you should never feel yourself. You should never think you got it under control because you can always learn. You know, my father once told me that, you know, One of the most dangerous things that you could ever say in life is, I know. Because once you say, I know, people stop listening. And when people, I mean, when you say, I know, people stop talking. And when people stop talking, that's when you stop learning. You know, I'm always on a quest to be a lifelong learner. And I invite you to as well. If this is a video that you found value in, please like, share, subscribe, send it to a friend, send it to a brother, send it to somebody that you know that needs to be around good, positive men, good, positive vibes that's looking to elevate. This is the place to be. I look forward to to your feedback. I look forward to your comments. And I'll see you on the next one. Peace.